Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to uh, project my voice, so hopefully you can all, all hear me. First of all, thanks to the team. Uh, thanks to everyone else uh, who's uh, contributed to this uh, concept. Uh, we're coming here today to kind of ask about using data to empower people with diabetes and other conditions to, uh, to better manage their condition. So let's uh, establish some quick facts. Uh, scale of diabetes, 3.8 million people in the UK have a condition. 3.2 million have been diagnosed. The difference have not been diagnosed. Um, each year, 24,000 people with diabetes die early. Uh, 100,000 uh, 100, patients are carried out each week, of which 80% of those, that's 80, could be preventable. So just to set you some um, numbers out there. In order to avoid those complications, and I'll show you some financial numbers in a minute, it's all down to good data and where you get that data from. You want to get good sugar control. <laughs> the numbers are between 4 and 8. This is influenced by diet, carbs, what you eat, the insulin that you give to break that down into uh, energy, and of course uh, exercise and lifestyle, mental and physical uh, health. Um, some costs, you didn't know, but with the cost of treating diabetes and its complications is £9.8 billion pounds each year. Just to treat complications alone, £7.7 .7 billion. That's people who develop uh, complications because it's not managed efficiency, uh, efficiency uh, effectively. Sorry. But what if everyone was given the access to their data uh, from many sources, public and private, in order to better control their condition, in order to help their clinicians to better support them uh, as well? Um, data is stored in three different locations. Primary healthcare, open from NHS and from your primary care services as well, blood tests that you might have or your HbA1cs. Uh, lifestyle, premium apps that we all use, RunKeeper, Fitbit and so on, and also from Pharma, those people that you take uh, you know, your blood glucose uh, levels in that regard. What if there was a national policy that enabled all data to be open regardless of where it was from, and you create it, uh, and you help therefore in improve the quality of life and reduce the cost of treating uh, complications? This is the average uh, uh, daily uh, activity for someone like myself and many and others in this room to treat their uh, condition. You have to switch between apps all the time to get specific uh, numbers to get that magical score between 4 and 8. We built a prototype, we tried to get some data to come in, it's very much just that. We're presenting you with a hypothesis in that regard. This is generally what it looks like. It could look a lot better, but of course in two days we can't do more. But we are confident that if you use up all the data together, make it open and enforce um, public side as well through NHS contracts to open the data, then obviously we can help people better manage the condition and reduce the cost. I think certainly, most probably from the um, from from the commercial side, there's a lot of contracts. For example, depending on if you're using, uh, there's two types of diabetes. There's obviously type two, which is the majority, and there's type one. Uh, whatever you want to do, you want to get that magic score. If you if you're going to do regular blood tests, that is that environment, that data is held in an environment that's locked down because companies think that they own that data. But obviously, as someone who has diabetes, I can choose that data. That should be mine. GDPR. And all that kind of discussion there should be able to open. So there has to be a certain negotiation there. Equally, that data, if it's fed back into the clinical situation, then obviously uh, diabetes care nurses, consultants, and so on would have a bigger uh, source of information with raw context, which would help to deliver even better uh, um, support to their team. So there is a negotiation and how you establish that with kind of contractual arrangements. One more question. The API, all the, the companies that you yeah. have up there have APIs. Were those APIs sufficient for what you want to do? We, some of the APIs are not open. Uh, I can speak specifically with regards to the APIs from uh, Libra, from AccuCheck. Uh, they actually keep them into specific organizations. Some of the pharma companies only let blood uh, results to go out to specific owned uh, environments as well. My sugar and one touch, uh, kind of a two, you only work with certain meters as well. So hence, the problem is there's no benchmark standard. So there's a digital solution, but before that, you need to agree uh, a policy, a national policy. That already exists with NICE. I've read obviously the documents from NICE in regards to standardizing that process, but the conversation has to be more about 
working with the public sector, uh, I'm sorry, with the private sector, so they can see a value to them. Interesting. <coughs> Tech companies are really disrupting this environment. IPs in the US have already been registered uh, with regards to kind of monitoring with a non-invasive manner, but got to simplify this in, in a way. If it takes five or six, you know, uh, open, close app, do a test and so on, do that, people are just not going to manage, they just get bored. I got bored before, my son's got bored, people in this room have got uh, bored. You just want to simplify it. and data is knowledge, is power. And